We've talked about the forces between charges, but now we need to describe those in terms of the electric field. But we'll start just by thinking about the concept of the electric field, just the idea of what a field means. So we usually start with a big whopping charge, big heavy charge sitting in the middle. In this one, we're going to give charge minus Q right there. And I can show you this because we have a big charge here. This is the famous Van de Graaff generator. There's a metal sphere, and this belt, when I turn it on, is going to spin, and it's going to create charge through the similar tribal electric effect, like rubbing Teflon on fur. And that charge gets deposited on the metal sphere. So it builds up a large charge. This one happens to build up a large negative charge. So here you can see, there you can see the belt going up and down. And it just takes a few minutes, and it builds up a pretty good charge. I can actually feel the charge pulling my clothes already. So let me turn it off, and to, ouch. Ow. Ow. And to prove to you that it's charged up, we can see, ow. Ow. OK, so it definitely charges up. Let's charge it up again. All right, here we go. And OK. Nice and negative. So now, the next thing we want to think about is another little charge that would feel the force. So often we'll draw that as a smaller, we might call it a test charge. In this case, we'll also make it negative. Because to show you that one, we're going to use the Teflon tape and the fur. Right, so I take my little charge probe here. It's just a piece of Teflon tape hanging off of a Teflon rod. Charge it up with the fur. It's now nice and negative. And if I try to get it to touch the Van der Graaff, of course, not even close. Right, if I get far enough away, this does hang uh, vertically because of its weight pulling it down. But as I get it close, the charged sphere is pushing. It's creating a force that pushes it that way. That's why it's tilted. But then I could stop. And what's the charged sphere doing now? It's not doing anything, right? Then I bring it back up, and it pushes on the tape. So then I take the tape away. What's it doing now? Uh, it's just sitting there. Right? What if I bring the tape over here? Right? Now the sphere's pushing the other way. It's pushing on the other side, on the tape. And I take the tape away. What is it doing? It's doing nothing, or is it doing something? This is the idea of the electric field. When the sphere sees a negative charge over here, it creates a repulsive force, right? Because like charges repel. But if we take it away and we put it over here, it creates um, a repulsive force that way. So the big charge in the middle, is it sentient? Does it have a, is it conscious? Can it say, well, let's see. When I'll watch for I see a charge, I'll push on it. It says, OK, well, now I better push on the charge over here. But you take it away, it says, OK, no, now I better push on the charge over here. Well, of course not, right? It's not alive. It's not thinking. It's just doing something everywhere. It's doing something everywhere in space. And what we say is it's creating an electric field. It's creating this thing that is also a vector that we call the electric field. It points, um, in this case, it points this way. It points towards negative charges, and it points away from positive charges. We're happening to do negative here because my Van de Graaff is negative and my tape is negative. So that's really the idea of the, electric of the electric field. It's what a charge sort of does to the space around it. And it does it everywhere. It doesn't just do something to the space around it when there's a charge here. It does it all the time. And if a charge comes here, it experiences that electric field. And that's what creates the force. So if I wanted to go all philosophical on you, I could say the electric field is the force of one charge pushing. Ooh, let that blow your mind. I'll see you in the next video.